Hello everyone. Um, today I'm going to be sharing a video on how I would typically paint the Rudraksh beads. Now uh, these are obviously terracotta um, um, terracotta beads that I have um, you know I have already shared a video of how I've actually made these. I'll again um, share the link to that video in the description box of uh, of this one. And um, so I think a couple of days ago I had uploaded a video of uh, how I had assembled a piece using um, you know a necklace rather using these set of beads and um, I think a lot of you got back to me asking how that uh, painting um, you know how that painting was typically done. Uh, now these obviously are heavily textured beads and um, uh, the method that I'm going to be using is going to be pretty crude pretty uh, you know, it, it, it's, there, there's nothing fancy to it. It's just going to be very, very, um, you know, simple. Something that really worked for me well, um, you know, just on a trial and error basis. And um, let's begin without uh, any further delay. So what I would typically use are, you know, shades of brown and orange typically for, you know, a Rudraksh. And this is what I have been, um, you know, what I've basically used. Um, uh, I mean, you know, you can basically just mix these, obviously more brown and less of the orange. So when I say that, uh, I mean, uh, if I'm taking, say, uh, one part of brown, it would be half a part of orange and I would mix that with water. And the other thing that I would also need is something like this. Now you see, I've already mixed, you know, a part of the uh, brown one part of the brown and half a part of orange with uh, a couple of drops of water. Now the dilution obviously depends on how thick or thin your paint is in the bottle or in the tube. Uh, so if you see the paint has to be a little bit uh, diluted. In fact, it cannot be too thick. So because uh, the idea is for the paint to actually seep through all of these little, you know, holes and uh, all these textures that we have made. So what I would typically do now is just dunk it inside and I would keep rotating this. I, I like I said, this method is not going to be too fancy. Uh, but the good part is this doesn't uh, make use of your hands or in, in any way. OK, so typically what I would do is I would um, I would run the brush in this manner just so that the beads kind of go in, you know, a circular motion in this manner so that the so that the entire part gets covered. Now, remember, if the paint is too thick, there is a good chance that the paint wouldn't seep through the textures. So you have to make sure that the paint is just, um, you know, does have a little quantity of water. And I would just go on to do this in a circular motion uh, till the paint actually uh, rather till the beads are actually dry. And um, this would take a little bit of time. And, um, you know, you just have to be patient. Just, this might take close to about, uh, you can say roughly about five minutes. And another advantage in this method is that that you will be able to use uh, see here I'm using approximately nine beads, uh, but you will actually be able to use at least another add another nine or ten more beads because this bowl can consist of that many more. So you'll be able to at least get like, you know, you add another like, uh, you know, 11 beads, you will get like 20 beads in one go. You'll be able to, you know, in this method, you'll be able to actually get about 20 fully painted beads. And that's a pretty quick method. Uh, so, you know, this keeps going on. And if you see, this is just going in a circular motion. It's just going on and on in a circular motion. And this shouldn't stop. Uh, remember, guys, this shouldn't stop. You have to constantly keep rotating this uh, just so that, uh, you know, the paint kind of is constantly getting absorbed in the bead and it, it is happening, you know, constantly in a rotational manner. Because if you stop and not do it for some time, there's a good chance that the bead might actually stick to the, uh, you know, stick to the paint and then it's just it just looks messy. So you begin to keep doing this and you already start to see that the uh, the paint is slowly starting to become thicker and thicker at the base of it. So keep doing this till it completely dries. This would roughly take, you know, based on how much paint you're actually taking in, I think this would roughly take about maybe about five minutes or probably lesser than five minutes, you know, based on. But it, it requires, uh, you know, vigorous mixing.
now um, if you actually see I've been um, you know mixing it for a while uh, for a couple of minutes now and you'll see that everything is actually been painted quite nice and evenly uh, let's remove it out yeah I know the bowl is a mess but uh, yep so this is how you know you kind of get it it's not I would say typically it's about um, uh, maybe about 95 percent dry because I can still feel a little bit of moistness but you can see that you know these beads are painted but the idea is that you don't want these very evenly painted because typically in a Rudraksh you would you know um, see basically color variations uh, like you know slightly uh, obviously the depths will have much deeper colors so ideally we are looking at achieving achieving an effect like that so for that there are a couple of methods now um, I would think you know a sandpaper would probably work very well but currently I don't have a sandpaper so uh, you know I'll, I'm also thinking about other methods to do it without generating too much of dry dust uh, because uh, let's face it it's it's not the most um, you know it's not the most healthiest of options to kind of inhale dry dust so what I have here is a bunch of things this is a fired terracotta piece you can clearly make out that you know with the noise sorry about the noise but you can clearly make out that this is a fired bowl and I usually use this base sometimes for scraping or you can also use um, now this is probably something which is there you know I use this typically only for clay I use this just for the clay purpose I don't combine um, uh, food and um, you know things I use for uh, well cooking and in the kitchen is is completely separate and this is only for you know the clay related purposes and um, uh, generally if I want to uh, you know what do you say strain or um, you know if I feel that the clay is too uh, too rough or too groggy I might want to just use this so this also works pretty well because it's because of the texture that it has and typically what I would do is I would just basically roughly I'm literally what I'm doing is I'm just grating the surface you know in and I'm just turning it in different different angles and what that does is if you see it basically brings out this kind of an effect you see that so what happens with that is that the depth is maintained so the depth of the beads always have a nice lovely dark color and see the only thing is please make sure that you know this kind of dust that gets collected uh, just make sure it's not you know you're not working under a fan or anything while doing this um, it's just it's best if you just you know do this um, on a piece of paper so that you're, you're able to collect this dust and throw it um, you know separately so when I keep doing this it gives me an it, it gives me a beautiful effect and the thing is the sandpaper and it's you don't have to do like the whole thing you know you can just do parts of it and you already you know get this kind of this kind of an effect what you're literally doing here is scraping off parts of the paint itself the this is basically by using the um, you know the uh, what do you say the strainer uh, you can also use this you know something but but make sure this is fired this is fired really well which is why you know uh, the noise can be a little irritating but um, you know this also works beautifully and try to um, what do you say uh, not do only in one place constantly keep rotating the beads so that you get um, you know uh, get all the all the sides worked the same thing instead of this if you have a sandpaper uh, you can do the same effect and try to you know uh, just scrape it off and get a little bit of the excess paint away yeah so this is this is pretty much it I mean you know this is how I have I have basically I kind of got this kind of a variation and um, it's honestly it's quite nice when it's actually put together in fact you can see a comparison right away uh, to a plain one and to say something see this is this is completely plain um, you know it doesn't have too much of a uh, what do you say well it, it it looks nice I mean if you want 
basically plain beads this is again another alternative but uh, you know when you have to compare say something which has a little bit more um, you know texture more character to it you know it's just I, I kind of like the effect that these kind of beads actually have so you know and you see that it's you know yeah I think this this technique might take a little time uh, you know when you have to grate a couple of beads but you know what it's it's okay it's it's just totally worth the worth the effort I would say I really hope you found this video useful everyone I sincerely hope uh, you know you uh, you really uh, uh, understood the technique that I've used here I have not used anything fancy uh, just basic set of things and uh, you saw how quickly I was able to actually paint close to like nine of these um, in fact that's just the least because that's all is what I have right now uh, but um, you know you can actually based on the size of the um, you know the vessel that you're basically using or the bowl that you're using you can actually do um, quite a quite a few and um, you know you can also do it in parts uh, because you, you know the idea is not to take in too much paint so let me repeat that um, you know typically the color what what kind of suits well for me is one part of brown and half a part of orange uh, somehow that seems to um, you know bring out the bring out a nice um, deep color and um, well you can always make variations to that there are no uh, you know hard and fast rules there I think some of you might obviously like it a little bit more lighter more orangish uh, well I typically um, you know like them more brown more earthy uh, so that's precisely why I um, you know again I apologize for the for the background noise that's constantly coming you know because of the scraping but um, yeah I think you know these are these are just beautiful they do generate a little bit of the you know the paint and you know you can always wear a pair of gloves to do this as well just so that you you know you you don't get um, all the you know the the dry dust in your nails and um, yeah I, I actually don't have nails so yeah that's it so this is it everyone I really hope you uh, you know you found this video useful this is how I got those beads aren't these absolutely beautiful I mean you know I, I really like these and especially when they um, you know uh, come together in a in a necklace or in a chain uh, they look so so pretty so nice I mean I really hope you found this video useful everyone. If yes, then please like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Thank you.